Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the weight of evil. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Expression. The verse I've been read is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. This morning, we continue on our topic, a potent Christian, a potent Christian. And the last time, I made us understand who a potent Christian is and the characteristics of a Christian of a potent Christian. So this morning, we will continue with a potent Christian. A potent Christian. Beloved, as I stated earlier, that whether we like it or not, whether we will it or not, note that once you enter in this world, you are automatically into a war, either spiritual or physical. You are not a type because whether you are a Christian or you are not a Christian. If you are a believer in Jesus and I receive him as your savior, you are in the body of Christ. This means you are in a spiritual war between God and his enemy. And if you have not received Jesus, you are still in the war. You just don't know if you are in yet or not. Therefore, you don't have control over the things that happen to you. I said you can be hit or hurt. In a crossfire from the enemy of your soul, and then not realize what is happening to you. And I say you could be suffering with problems from one another, one accident or one disease after another. The failure of marriage troubled issues, problems at work, financial troubles, mental troubles, and the list will go on. Christians or non-Christians, we are at war. And I want you to know that believers can suffer from crossfire too, but that's because they not understand a war is going on and they are in it. For too many believers are being knocked around by the enemy of their souls and their life, but they think bad things just happen to, to them because they that is they believe in life. So they are not acti- actively engaged in a war. Even though they are on receiving end of consequences of that war, they are touched, becomes wounded and incapacitated because they are totally unprepared to face enemy opposition, who is the devil and his agents. So therefore, when you go to the verse after the verse 12 is that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of the world against spiritual wickedness in high places hallelujah Beloved, once you are here, you are on the battlefield. As a person, not because you are a Christian, 
Muslim, Jews, occultic believer or non-believer. But you, but for we Christians, we can become a special target because the enemy of God becomes our enemy. We love to survive. You have to be able to pass through this world successfully on your feet and be ready to fight on. So when you go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, the verse says, we should have complete armor of God. And last I made you understand that what an armor of God is. And when you go to the dictionaries of this world, it's a metal covering formerly want to protect the body in battle. And I made you understand that we are not talking about the battle that involves bullets and guns. So therefore, when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, therefore the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Beloved, we are fighting or we are in a battle against an enemy that we don't see. The enemy who is not flesh, who is not blood. Therefore, when you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the third, the third verse, he said, For though we walk in flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. And therefore, ask you, so what do we do? Therefore, when you get to the verse 14, he talk about the armor of God. And it's important that we read that verse 14, which has outlined the armor of God to be truth, to be righteousness, to be peace, to be faith. salvation and to be the word of God and lastly to be prayer the last time we started off with the truth and you dealt comprehensive with it and we said the truth is your loins and the loins depicting the soldier a military soldier, a Roman soldier. We also talk about righteousness. And we said, the righteousness is the blessed fruit of the soldier. Otherwise, I can say the bulletproof. We also talk about peace. And that is where we stop. So this morning, we will talk about the peace, we'll talk about the faith, we we'll talk about salvation, we'll talk about the word of God, and we we'll talk about prayer. So quickly go to Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 14 down, for us to get the depiction of what Apostle Paul was talking about, to being a potent Christian. What does it take for us to be a potent Christian? So verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girded about the truth with truth, and having on the blessed spirit of righteousness. Verse 15, And your feet should with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, that's 16, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the, the fairy tale that of the wicked. And 17 says, And take the hermit of salvation and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Because 18 says, Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with a perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utter, utterances may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly 
to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bounds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Uh, I love the verse 20. For, for which I am an ambassador in bounds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ spoke boldly against the enemy after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He has equipped himself as a mighty warrior, as a soldier. And therefore the enemy who also know the word used the word against on Jesus and Jesus reversed him with the word mightily. And therefore after he had fasted, he came to him and said, Turn bread. He was hungry. I turned that man but does not live by bread alone. I told him again. He showed all the kingdom and said what? He should bow to him and he gave him the kingdom of his ex. And what did he tell him? He said, depart from me. He also told him what? To throw himself down that is written that what? He will not let his food dash. Listen, beloved, you must be a potent Christian in all roundness, not parts, or else you may not be able to what? Face the enemy. So quickly, therefore, having spoken about the truth, having spoken about righteousness, having spoken about the peace, we will go on to still our rival days to make us a better Christian. So as I said in the last discussion, peace, peace, peace in this, as written by Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 14 down, is your shoe. And peace is a state or period in which there is no war or war has ended. It is freedom from dis- disturbance. When you go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of what? Of God. This is one of the qualities that Jesus did talk about when he was speaking his disciples. And the on the sermon on the plain, as written in Matthew chapter 5, from verse 4 down, from verse 3 down. So, beloved, a potent Christian must be guided with peace and live in peace. Let the peace of God in us keep our hearts and mind from worries. It it positions us for victory over the schemes of the evil and and its agent. We are thus able to crush Satan under our feet. The peace of God in us strengthens us from within. So, beloved, when we have peace, that it guides our heart and mind and it positions us for victory. The peace of God in us enable us to experience the joy that is not dependent on external circumstances. The coming of the storm of life by the Holy Spirit in us cures us of anxiety, depression, 
hypertension, and etc. Peace positioning us to live righteously, and both are closely related. Hallelujah. You can see that when we go through this, we find out that being being truthful, being righteous, being at peace is interwoven, related. And therefore, a complete soldier, well dressed, have a good belt, have a powerful blade spread, have a good shoe to wear, have a good shield to put on, have a very good helmet, have a very potent sword, and he is a prayerful person. Therefore, a good soldier should be guided in truth, should be guided in righteousness, should be guided in peace, should be a faith person, should be a salvation led person, or should have the word of God, and it should be a prayer for person. So a potent Christian must be guided with peace and should be in peace. When you are in peace and you practice peace, as Jesus stated in the Beatitude, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, then you will surely experience joy, good health, and a righteousness also, which is the product of have, of being a peaceful person. When you read Psalm 85, verse 10, he says, Mercy and truth both are together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Hallelujah. Also, peace of God guides our hearts and mind and position us for victory. When you go to Romans chapter 16, verse 20, he says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of God, our Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shall be with you. Hallelujah. See how beautiful that Romans chapter 6, verse 20 put it, that the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. So it's not far-fetched that apostle Paul depicted peace as a shoe. As I said earlier, you can't be a successful soldier without a very good shoe. And therefore, you cannot be a successful spiritual soldier without you moving in a very good shoe, which is having peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We go on. We go on. So the first fourth one is faith. And when you read the verse 14 down, 2 to 20, faith is not as the shield. Faith is not as the shield for the strong Roman soldier. And what does it say about spiritually? First, let us define what faith is. It's what a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Hallelujah. And when we go on, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, that is the best definition of faith in the Bible or in the Holy Book. He said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Faith is what? It's having confidence and hope in the promise of God as revealed to you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So as a soldier, you have the assurance that you're going to win the battle. As a spiritual soldier, you have that you have the assurance that no matter what the enemy throws at you, you are going to be a conqueror. So if the enemy throws financial difficulty at you, you know you are going to overcome when you are thrown 
at marriage difficult at you, you know that you are going to have a beautiful marriage. When sickness is thrown at you, oh, you know that by the stripe of Jesus you are healed. When you are down, you said that by what? By the promises of God, you have an abundance. So for a Christian, for a potent Christian, we have the assurance that things are, are going to be good. Even when things are difficult, we are not troubled about the present situation, but we stand in faith that things are good no matter the situation that we are in. Hallelujah. 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 The context of Hebrews chapter 11 is the one and encourage people for facing trials to maintain their faith in God and not to return to their old ways. The essence of the of this, as written in Ephesians in Hebrews chapter 11, is to strengthen the faith of believers. When you go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it mentioned that let us hold fast to the profession profession of our faith without what waving. For his faithful that promised. I believe that this is what led to the in-depth discussion oh, about faith in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. That is why Apostle Paul defined faith immediately when you would go to the verse 1. He continued further to give a random of the summary of the subject of faith. In the Bible, he mentioned the testimony of those great men and women that demonstrated their faith in God. And when you go further, I see that when he ends with a kind of men, a woman of war who went through faith and become overcomers. Beloved, we are overcomers as Christians. It is beautiful to be with Christ Jesus. It is beautiful to know the king of the universe. And I tell you, when you know Jesus, you have known the truth. When you know Jesus, as beautiful stated by Apostle Paul, you will have your righteousness intact because we cannot have our righteousness on our own. It is only by God's grace. And when you know Jesus, oh beloved, you have peace. You have peace in your mind. And I tell you, when you have Jesus, oh, I tell you, you have faith. And I tell you conclusively, my beloved, that a potent Christian must have faith, an extraordinary faith in God who loves and does great things for us. Hallelujah. I can tell you, that faith is the basic requirement of life that keeps your hope alive. And from being shaken when we face trials, the stronger your hope, the stronger your faith in God. Faith is the most potent force in the whole universe that opens invisible, impossible doors and the master key to the world of good reports. Hallelujah. I love this statement. Is the faith is the most potent force in the whole universe that opens impossible doors and the master key to the world of good reports, as written in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. Is that without faith, you will live a life of struggles and your hope and confidence will be cast off because faith is what gives value to our destiny. Stand firm on the words of God that you have received and trust every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. I stated in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, that tells us, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it's written, just shall live, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. So as a spiritual soldier, 
you must live by faith. You must be potent with faith. It is one of the strong armor of God, beloved, that you have this. You will be at peace. As humans, we have faith in, in ordinary things of life. Trust our skills, capabilities, and, te- and talents. But as believers, you must have faith in an ordinary God who loves and does great or extraordinary things in our life. Hallelujah. God desires to have an intimate relationship with us. For genuine faith anchors on our what relationship with Him. It requires us to believe and trust in Him who is more able and competent than us. Hallelujah. Or oh, you are struggling with your faith in God. Beloved, do you want to be justified because before God? I tell you, have faith in God. With Him, you will move mountains. Amen. It is beautiful to have known days about faith. And I believe that when we talk about salvation, which is our next one, you will also be equally blessed. So our next one is, is salvation, which is helmets. Beloved, you cannot be a soldier without a protective helmet. So what is salvation? Salvation is preservation or deliverance from harm, ruins, or loss. Hallelujah. Salvation is... Is perseverance, preservation, or deliverance from harm, or what? Ruin or loss. Hallelujah. Salvation is God's grace, it is the gift of freedom from our sins. That Jesus made possible by taking the punishment for our sins on the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus sacrificed himself so that we will have what? Salvation. So salvation is a gift to us from Jesus. From God himself. It is the gift of freedom from our sins that Jesus made possible by taking the punishment for our sins on the cross. Salvation in religion, deliverance from what? Fundamental negative condition such as suffering, evil, death. Or the restoration or elevation of the natural world to the higher, better state. Hallelujah. A potent Christian, if you read from Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Hallelujah. Beloved, it sounds too good to be true. It sounds so too easy. Even though it may be seem too good for the words or completely different from anything you have ever experienced before, it is the truth of God. This is the beauty and mystery of grace, receiving forgiveness that we don't deserve. Hallelujah. Yes. Because for Jesus to die on the cross, and it says that what? If you confess our sin, he, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is one of the most important promises of the scripture. It gives us freedom and hope for the future. God is faithful and daily invites us to find new life in response to 
that faithfulness. Hallelujah. 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 Salvation is for something, not just from it. Sometimes it seems like the Christian life is all about being saved and then hoping other people get saved. But when we go to a little deeper, we discover that being saved means that we are saved not only from something, our sins, but also for something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation is a free gift that God offers to our life. Let's go on our next. I like to talk deep on this salvation thing. Beloved, you cannot joke with your salvation. So when he goes to Romans chapter 6, 1 verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Uh, the gospel is the power of God over Satan. And sin, the gospel tell us that the power of sin has been broken. Hallelujah. So beloved, when to become a potent Christian, you must have had power over what? Sin. And when to become, to have power over sin, it is not easy. It is when you accept Jesus as your love and personal savior. That is why you have salvation. As I said again in Romans chapter 16, the, the, the part B said, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. That is to believe who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Beloved, let us go on on our six on the armor of God, which is the word of God. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword, piercing even through the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and in the center of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 17 verse 17. Jesus prayed, sanctify them by your truth, and your word is truth. Hallelujah. That was Jesus. He said again, sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. And that is John chapter 17. Verse 17. Beloved, the word of God is powerful. When you read the Bible, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with us, and the word became God, and it dwelled among us. So therefore, Jesus is the word. Jesus was there in the beginning. So who has the word is a powerful Christian. If you have the word of God, Oh, I tell you, beloved, for a potent Christian, you must have the word of God. On your fingertips, have the word of God with you in your heart and soul. But the word of God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. By the word of God, the heaven and earth were created. Jesus is the word as described in John. Not also that Jesus conquered Satan by the word. The power of the word gave life to the earth and everything that existed in it. The man was also created by the word. This means that efficiency of the word of God and the need to dwell in continually. The word of God is meant to be obeyed by the believer. It is the only power that produces salvation to sinners. It takes away sin and guilt from the supposedly condemned sinner. The word becomes on him for freedom 
It is the source of faith to believers. It brings healing to the sick and those who are downtrodden. The believer pill, pill is the word. The first resort for every child of God who falls sick should be the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God is the armor of a believer. It's a spiritual warfare. It destroys the works of the devil and renders the shattered dark word. True riches are hidden in the word of God. It is the strength of the believer that enable him to go through difficult terrains and hurts. No one can navigate the undiluting terrain of the word without having a firm grip on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must be well equipped with the word. The word of God is all you need to succeed in life this life journey. You study, you read the word of God on daily basis and watch your spiritual growth. Beloved, when you are equipped with the word of God, it's beautiful. It is very important for you to know that our God created the whole universe just by mentioning or pronouncing words. And Jesus conquered Satan by the word. Beloved, it is very important to study your Bible and equip yourself because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And most of the times God comes to a, a man of God depicting it with the sword of the spirit. That means he has given you the word to go out and preach the gospel. Beloved, be equipped with the sword of the spirit and surely you'll be blessed. Then lastly is prayer. The British or the Britannica says that prayer is an act of communication between humans with the secret of a holy God, the God's the transcend realm or supernatural powers. Prayer, to me, is the connection point between the creator and the created, or between humans and God, between the believer and God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, his ears are atten attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Hallelujah. So prayer is one of the most essential ammo in the body of Christ. Because God listens to what? The righteous through prayer. A potent Christian is a powerful, a prayerful Christian. A powerful Christian is a prayerful Christian. If prayer is the connection between God and humanity, then prayer should be a habit. Jesus went strong from strength to strength into prayer. He went for 40 days and 40 nights before then. He started his, his ministry. And at the cross, he, he made prayer his last point. At the beginning, he started with prayer. And at the end, he started with prayer. Jesus started with prayer, and Jesus started and ended with prayer. Beloved, to be a potent Christian. To be a potent Christian, you should have truth. You should have righteousness. You should be in peace. You have faith. We have, this, we have to be strong in our salvation. We should have the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And should be prayerful. Beloved, Ephesians chapter 10, 6, verse 10 says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the weight of the evil. Beloved, who is a potent Christian? Who is a potent Christian? A potent Christian, as I said. Is the one who is truthful. A potent Christian who is the one who has who is having righteousness. A potent Christian is one with peace. A potent Christian is the one that is that have faith. A potent Christian is the one that have salvation. A potent Christian is the one that have the word of God. A potent Christian is the one who is prayerful. I still remain Apostle Philip in Cancer. I want to leave you here. This faith expression. God bless you that I have listened. I believe that you have been equipped, 
and now you know your ends. Being strong Christian, be a potent Christian, is what I've been stated in Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 to 20. Be guided with this, and you'll be blessed, and you'll thank me later. I pray for you that have been listening to this from any other corners of this world. That God should bless you and keep you. He should leave his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bye for now. We shall meet another time.